All right, time to finally install this kit. See how she goes. So as I start looking to where to mount the nozzle in here, I actually pulled out the plug and the nozzle and I actually tapped if you can see that I tapped into the to the top of it so what I'm going to be doing is installing this into the skunk 2 which it already comes with so have it in there like that and then I'm actually going to have the nozzle threaded into this um, I mean, if it works, no leaks, then, I mean, that's going to be perfect. The other 90, so I'll be able to insert that, thread that on to wherever, wherever we want it angled, and then it's going to look pretty clean, and then I'm just going to have, obviously, the line coming out here, and then most likely ran right into the, right into the cabin. And then um, it's just going to go right down alongside the car into the trunk. But that looks good so far. That looks nice. I'll, uh, I'll keep uh, figuring out some stuff and then I'll check in with you guys. Alright, so ran into a little bit of an issue. I tried to uh, hook everything up and test it out of here. And basically what it was doing was it's just spraying inside here. And then it's not coming out as a mist. It's just coming out as more of like a slurry. And uh, that is definitely not good when you're trying to inject it into your motor. You want it as, uh, as much as a mist as you can. So when I turn the pump on, you're going to see what it does inside the nozzle that I, I thought it would work. So that's what it's doing, which that's not going to create any power. It's going to create more of a loss and probably blow my engine up. So this is what it what it's supposed to do. So with no nozzle on it. So very wide mist, perfect. So, I don't know if that route is going to work. Plug this and then drill and tap right into the bottom next to it so it's the correct size. Just so the, the nozzle can protrude and spray the proper pattern that it wants. Um, but with that, with that cap on it trying to go in there, it's just, that's just not going to work. So for the meantime, we're going to work on the trunk, we're going to get all these carpeting out, and uh, we're going to check to see where we can mount it, and um, just try to get the, the reservoir back here. This area would be perfect, because obviously it's nice and out of the way. So I'll try to mount the tank here, um, and if I'm going to, I think I'm going to mount the pump in here, just like I did my, uh, my turbo Civic. Alright, so I figured out where I'm going to mount it, and I'm going to mount it right here. I already uh, used some self tappers. It's nice and tight in there. And I have this little hole saw bit. I'm going to do it nice on the side, right about 60% up. I'm going to drill that in, pop a hole through it, and then I'll be able to put the low level sensor in and uh, put some of the 6000 um, the sealant on it. Get it nice and tight, call it a day. Here's the reservoir tank mounted. There's the pump. As you can see, I have the check valve installed. Um, and that's just so it can't backfeed any pressure 
um, or any water back into the system. Um, so I'll go over a few things with you. So we got two lines coming out of the, the float sensor. Um, one line is supposed to be to ground back here and the other line gets sent back up to the LED all the way at the front. I'm going to fix these LEDs. Obviously I made not so good, uh, cuts there. Um, so I'm going to show you the full throttle pedal switch. So this is how I have it mounted. Um, I have it screwed into the side of the pedal. So once you full throttle it, it engages. And I have all the wires ran all the way tucked back. Everything ran down. Here's the har the harness is up here. Um, and the line... The water line as you can see it right there that actually goes out into the fender well so here it comes out obviously it's not the most cleanest but there it comes comes out comes under and that's where I had to mount my uh, my nozzle which was on the bottom side so as you can see there it's drilled tapped right into the in the bottom of the intake after the MAF sensor Obviously, you don't want any liquid spraying on the MAF sensor because that's, uh, yeah, that's not good. So, um, now that it's all installed, I'm going to put some liquid in it, go take it for a test drive, and uh, see how it works. I have a 1 mil nozzle on it, um, so what came with the kit was a 3 and a 5, so perfect for turbo or supercharged applications. You can make anywhere from like 200 wheel to like four or 500 wheel um, on those and you'll be perfect. Um, so this is a one. So this is great for NA. Um, just to try to reduce any knock or detonation um, and kind of help out with intake air temps. So I'm gonna upload um, another flash that I just did. Um, it's going to ramp up to 21 degrees of timing um, towards redline, which I just still have mine set to um, 7200. Um, there's no springs or retainers in this motor, um, so I don't see any point in revving it higher than factory. We're going to go for a ride and uh, see basically what it's doing. Um, if there's any knock or pre-detonation, any signs, um, if not, I'm going to basically turn it up a little bit, you know, in tiny increments to basically see where I can kind of get away with, with what size nozzle. So just because it's a one, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get away with too much. Um, if I need to, I'll upgrade to the three. Um, but in doing so, I'm going to have to change a lot with, with, um, the fuel maps, um, because it's going to be spraying a lot more in there. So. I've only been doing this since my last turbo car um, just because I just wanted to teach myself and kind of, you know, learn my own ways. If something, you know, messes up, I, I change it. I try to learn from my mistakes and, uh, you know, just keep going and see where I uh, end up. So as you can see, um, about 7,200 RPMs, um, we're going to be about 21 degrees. Um, so it slowly ramps up. Redline, I have it at about 12.5 to 1 for air fuel, so you'll see how much it changes. Uh, it's about a day later. I uh, got everything finished up, and um, with this, I ended up upgrading to the 3 mil nozzle. So I'm going to show you here in a sec that the one mil just did not want to do much. Uh, I got a good amount of knock or pre-detonation out of the way when I upgraded to 21 degrees of timing. But after I started trying to push it a little bit more 
and noticed that the intake temps weren't really dropping as much, I ended up upgrading to the three mil nozzle. So after the upgrade to the three mil nozzle, I uh, took it for a ride, data logged, kind of ripped on it a little more, see where that kind of got me. And it works really well. Um, I definitely like it so much better than the one mil. I know it does so much better when I was looking through my data logs for the intake air temps. It like immediately drops it like three to five degrees almost instantly. So I'm gonna run with this. I'm gonna take it to the track. I'm gonna see what it runs. I'll obviously take you guys with me. We're gonna check that out. And hopefully we can run maybe a 14.6. Um, I'll, I'll have to update the video for you guys. Um, I ran a 14.8, I believe a 95. Um, and that was pretty good. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I will see you guys in the next episode.